it didn't bother me because I was on a mission. And at the end of the three days, it is amazing how the Lord spelled it out for me. He said, this man is getting emotionally involved with you. And he thinks he's in love with you. She goes, there we go. She says, that's right. I said, so let me tell you, you're counseling him instead of him counseling you. Yeah. He said, he was in love with me. I said, I knew it, man. God done showed me. <laughs> you can hide, but you can't. You, I mean, you can run, but you can't hide from the Spirit of God, right? All right, so then, so, so then I used to meet him every morning at church, and we'd pray together and stuff. And by this time, and I had the peace of God. I really did. And I went to, to the church where he was at, and, I, and he wasn't there yet. And I went and I knelt on my, my face at the altar, and I began to cry out to God. And I was crying not for myself. I was crying for him. And I was trying to look into his pain and to see what the heck are you trying to do. In Jesus' name, I just started. And all of a sudden, I heard the door slam. And then he came behind me and literally, and he's a big guy, he literally fell on me and started bawling like a little baby and he began to tell me that he was sorry. I said, you know what, bro? Okay, so you don't do, you don't call my wife, you don't contact her, you have nothing to do with her from this point on. Now look how snazzy the devil is, okay? He says, yeah, but you don't know, man. She needs me, babe. She needs me. I go, ah, you know what? I'm a little, but I'm Picoso. I said, if you don't back off, I'm going to kick you in the shins, and it's all over after that. I'm going to put you down. You mess it. You can come in the chicken house, but you can't mess with the chickens. Those are my chickens. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. And you, that's why it says you have to be prepared in advance and you have to be waiting. You got because this this devil, Chamuco Diablo, man, he's ready to eat you up. He's ready to take you down. He's ready to discredit your 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 uh, your integrity. He's ready to discredit your character. And you can't afford that. I can't afford that. Therefore, put on God's complete armor. You want to know what happened? Uh, just catch it next chapter. <laughs> that you may be able. What well, does that mean? Amy been together forty years. That's a whole generation. What does that tell you? Tell you we were, our relationship was strong. It was strong, and we survived and weathered the storm. You know, and, and back then it was like what about? Jeez, we've been married almost. I think my, my, my pastor was only like, uh, how old were you, son? And he said, you don't remember none of it. Thank the Lord. Now you remember. <laughs> Adam was just a baby, and, and Erica was, I think she was like five years old. There you go. How, so that would make you, what, three, son? That would make you three, and Adam, that would make you about a year, something like that. So all my babies were little, you know. But I saw it. I saw it. It, 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 was, it was a horrible experience. But we weathered the storm. And you know what's, what's crazy about, about nowadays, you know, couples get married and they're together two years and they want to go. They want to be, they want to split ways. They don't know how to, how to persevere. They don't know how to stay in there and, 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 and stay in the fray and keep punching and keep, keep fighting for their relationship. And, and, I, and that's why the Lord has put this word upon me. Because when I fell and I was laid out and then they found blood clots and I thought maybe, maybe, just maybe I'm going to go home. And I said, I'd love to go home, Lord, if it's my time. But it's, I don't think it's my time. And God <coughs> spared me in that sense. But you know what? It's like, it's, it's like uh, God giving me the time to finish my mission here on earth. You know, I mean, I'll be joke about it a lot. You know, I told all my grandkids, now I'm a real grandpa now, because I'm 60. You can't be a real grandpa till you're 60. They can call you grandpa all you want, they want, till you have gray hair and you're 60. You can't. One of my grandkids.
Jesus says, where you been? Where you been? He put a light on it, man. It'll blind you. Matthew 5.27, almost done. You have heard that it was said that you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who so much as looks at a woman with an evil desire for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Well, one of the Ten Commandments is thou shalt not commit adultery, right? And that's what Jesus was bringing out. But he says, I didn't come to do away with the law. I came to, you know, I came to complete it. So the complete law then is Jesus Christ. He's the beginning, the end, the mid in the middle, and the end, and everything else. He's the all in all. So, so he says, he says to these Pharisees, you know, you think you're all that because you're doing your stuff on the side and nobody's looking. But you know what? It, it, I'm, I'm looking to wait, wait into the heart. How many remember the message Pastor brought on the heart? That God looks inside the heart. And you're not to judge somebody from the outside appearance, but from what their insights is. What's going on on the inside of their heart. And, and that's where we have to be careful because Jesus said, let me take it a step deeper. Let me take it a little bit deeper for you. If you even look at a woman and desire her in an evil way, you've already, you've already slept with her. Whether she wants you to be sleep with her or not. Hey guys, have you ever looked at a girl and you're looking at her and she'll go like this? She'll cover herself up. God only knows what kind of devil's looking out of your eyes because she's trying to cover up. Come on. And she might even turn her back on you. So what are you doing? Why are you looking at me like that? Shame on us. God looks deep. You know, when when God took me to Decatur, Nebraska, he he just opened me up. He filleted me, man. He cut my neck open and he put my head back and he looked in there and he reached his hand and took out every dirty thing that he saw and he cleaned it and he brought it out and he took it out and he took it out and he took it out to the point that I could walk down a mall without looking with, with blinders on and I just looked straight ahead and every woman that would ever pass by I would just ignore and keep going straight. What a victory! What a, what a ton of bricks that came off of my shoulders! I didn't have to feel guilty because I felt like I was being unfaithful to my wife and I felt like I was being unfaithful to my God. And you know what? That was an everyday occurrence until the Lord split me open and filleted me and said, Mio, it's time to end now. This is time to stop. I'm going to clean you. I'm going to go into you and I'm going to take everything that doesn't belong. You shouldn't have let me fall in that little hole. So he says, if you even look on somebody, and it's not just talking to the guys, my sisters, he's talking about you too. You guys are just as evil as we are. Come on. I could tell you some stories, brother. Matthew 15, 18, it says, but who, whatsoever comes out of the mouth comes from the heart. And this is what makes a man unclean and defiles him. What does church? What's on the inside? For out of the heart comes evil, or come evil thoughts. And Amplified says evil thoughts and reasonings, and disputings and designs. I want you to look at that song, that, that word designs. Because the mind without God, and, I, and, and God can even be living in your spirit, but you know what? That mind is going a thousand miles an hour. Amen. How can I do this? How can I get closer? What can I do? And it's the, the design. You've heard God, God created you by design. And therefore, he's made you a creator. So we create things. We can create things in our lives. So I, I, that, that word scares me. Such as murder, oh, here we go. Such as murder, adultery, sexual vice, theft, 
false witnessing, uh, slander, and irreverent, an irreverent uh, spirit. No, an irreverent. Man, I wish I could. Oh, irreverent speech. You know, I've, I've been around the body of Christ here, and, and uh, you know, you can you can hear words like "hal" or the D word. Every once in a while, the F word will come out. Um, if you have problems with that kind of language, check yourself because you could be dealing with an unclean spirit. Because that's what's coming out, unclean speech, irreverent speech. So that goes right into the realm of swearing or cussing and using words that you're not supposed to. And I'm not even saying go into these and thous and you know, and then, and you know. No, but you, you, you could talk normal. Okay, so, so that's what he's saying. So, so there are what, these are what make a man unclean and defile him. Almost done. But eating with unwashed hands does not make him unclean or defile him. But that doesn't mean you could smoke or drink. My sister said that means I could smoke. <laughs> Last scripture, 1 Corinthians 10, 3, 4. Though we walk or live in the flesh, we are not carrying on our warfare according to the flesh and using mere human weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or physical weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty through God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. That, that, which, you know, that which makes you go against God is a stronghold. This is how it was taught to me, that when you're demonized, there's a demon in your life. It enhances whatever problem you have. It takes it to another level. I remember when I used to go to, uh, to um, the Denver City and County, County with Brother Nate Avalos. He's, he's passed away since, but, but he, was, he was cool. He mentored my son, your pastor. Uh, he had, because your pastor ended up in juvenile hall one time, and you know, Nate, uh, Brother Nate went down there and talked to him and his best friend. They were both in juvie. Long story short, though, he, he would open up the Bible and he started talking about the lust of the eyes one time. And now this cracked, this cracked the guys up that were in the jail. He says, you know how you go, you, you have to just know him, man. He was a ruffian. He was a street guy. And he, you know how you go, and then there's a, there's a chick that walks by, man, and you look at her, and then you, you try to look away, and then you look at her again, and then you look away, and then you look at her again. He said, what are you not seeing after the first time? Why you gotta look two more times? Once is enough. You don't gotta look twice or three times or four times. Because if you do, he says, then you got a problem. And he didn't say it like I'm saying it now, but I'm making more of a reality here that the devil has got a foothold or a stronghold on your life. And man, he's making you look nuts. He's making you go nuts. He's making you feel guilty. He's making you feel beneath your privilege. He's making you feel like you failed God. He's making you feel like you ain't shouldn't even be serving the Lord. Okay, I'm almost done. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal with their mighty through God to the pulling down the strongholds. And then as much then as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings, the devil will have you reasoning all day long. The whys that it's okay to keep your devil, or and the whys of why, how you know what it's just not just human nature. That's just the way we're made, and you can bring up all kinds of different excuses to bring before the Lord. But according to my Bible, what is yes is yes, and what is no and no, and what is clean is clean, and what is dirty is dirty, and what is is, is darkness is darkness, and what is light is light. <laughs> 